welcome to another tutorial video. Today's one is another one using my pancake maker to um, melt some embossing powder onto a grey board shape. This one is one that I have bought rather than die cut myself and it came in a pack of two. Um, it's from the Tando Creative Company. I got it from Budley Crafts on their website um, but they're really cute little deer. And they were only a pound for the two of them, so I didn't think that was too bad. I'm not sure if I should do the other card, because I'm going to do one to obviously show you. I don't know if I should do it the opposite way round. Um, I think that might look quite nice, actually. But this is the one that I have made, and I've used um, mostly tonic embossing powders, but I started off with a base of a uh, tarnished silver, which is a really old Cosmic Shimmer one that I got cheap um, in a craft shop. This is vintage tarnished silver silver so I used a base of that to start with and then I brought in um, this is Duchess Blue um, deep Blue Depths and Silver Moonlight from Nouveau and then I also brought in a tiny little sprinkle of what's this one called Tropic Aqua Blaze this is the one that's given that light blue in there so I use that very sparingly and what else did I sprinkle in that one I think that was everything I used on that um, and maybe a bit of clear to begin with as well to help the uh, vintage black move around a little bit and then the background of this card which is what we're going to start with is um, the Tim Holtz by Sizzix embossing folder it's a 3D embossing folder and it's called Lumber so it is just like um, planks of wood and so it's called Lumber it's really detailed, it's a really cool one, but um, when I was embossing this, I've been using the Pia Blue Texture Craft Perfect from the Coral Skies Colour Trend from Tonic, and um, the first one I embossed, it really didn't emboss that great, because I'm using a thinner cardstock than what I would normally use, I think you need to add extra pressure than what you would normally use in your die cutting machine, so I just... Um, folded over how many sheets did I use three sheets folded over three sheets of scrap um, just printer paper and used that in there as well so we're going to actually do that together but I embossed it and then I used a mixture of the Mediterranean blue gilding polish plus some of this gorgeous one this is the midnight sparkle kiss and it's uh, it is like um navy blue rather than being black but it's got multi colours in it it's got some green some red some blue all mixed into it it's really really pretty that one and it just adds that tiny little like holographic sparkly bit into the background just really subtle i didn't go too heavy with it and then this is some gorgeous lawn fawn uh, letter dies i love these i've used these so much already this was henry's abc you can also get um numbers with these as well um, but I've used those to do the merry and then I've done Christmas with my Dymo labeler and then I've just finished off with a few um, sequins like star sequins and uh, snowflake sequins and all um, silver dome gems as well to finish that off so I've gone for a very navy blue and silver colour scheme for this one so let's start by doing our 3D embossing with the embossing folder so, I've got a piece of the peer view cardstock here. Now, I want the, um, the top side of this to be the smoother side of the cardstock. So, when you have one of these Sizzix folders, it looks like they put the Sizzix writing on the side that will be the top if you want the embossed version. So, I'm going to put the smooth side facing upwards, and then I'm going to close it like that, and that should give me the embossed version on the smooth side of the cardstock. Or, if this was mirror card, it would be on the mirror side of the cardstock. Then, I'm just going to bring in my tangerine, move all my other bits out of the way. Okay, then I've got to remember what sandwich I used for this. Okay, so there's me saying that I've got to use the um, cardstock to make the sandwich thicker, but it's actually because I completely changed the plates that I'm using. So I'm actually using two pink plates. So these are the pink plates that come with the tonic tangerine, and I got my dad to cut them in half. So I use two pink plates, plus those three sheets of A4 printer paper folded in half to do this folder. I found that's what worked best, plus you want to spray your cardstock with water. I'd forgotten that tip before as well. 
So I'm going to do it off camera so I don't get everything wet because I've got everything on my desk already. So I've just done a light mist of water on that. I'm going to put that smooth side up again and then put that down with the one pink plate underneath, then the scrap paper and then the other pink plate on the top. If you've got a different machine, um, you're going to have to play around with your sandwich for these 3D Sizzix folders because uh, they're really fat compared to other embossing folders. So you kind of have to play around with what the best sandwich combination is for you. But we should have a really deep, gorgeous, embossed impression there. And we're going to let that dry whilst we're working on the actual heat embossing portion as well um, and then we'll come back and use our metallic gilding polishes on top of this it's a little bit cockled because of the water but when we come back to that it should be nice and flat for us to work on so I'll put that off to one side and move my machine out of the way and these little bits and pieces as well and then we're going to come back to doing the embossing powders so if you've watched one of my other advent videos you will have seen me using this it is a pancake maker or also a popcorn maker um, and I'm just using it as a heat source to melt embossing powder it doesn't work as quickly with these uh, pre-bought pieces because they're really fat um, chipboard or greyboard whereas before I was just die cutting my own um, tonic greyboard with a, a circle die to create the shape and this one is really thick so we're going to have to leave it a bit longer to get it to melt and also hold it down whilst it's melting as well so I'm going to put that onto there, turn it on and then I'm going to go with a base of um, the vintage black, which is basically just like big crystals of black and silver embossing powder. So if you had the WOW version, you could mix black and silver ultra high together to get that combination. And then I'm also using clear as well. Um, I did show all of the, the full pots of these before, I, and I showed the big pot earlier, and this is the clear one that I've been using. But any um, ultra thick ones that you might have in your stash from the days where you might have had a... Um, a melt pot or something um, you know all of those kind of embossing powders will work perfectly for this but you can also use all of your normal embossing powders as well as I showed you earlier we're going to be using some of the normal tonic embossing powders but we want to start off with a lovely thick base of um, the thicker embossing powders I mean this could be your normal embossing powders but um, you're going to use a lot of them so it's kind of worth more um, like using some of the thicker powders to actually get this going and, and cover the actual piece in a layer of embossing powder first so I'm going to put um, a decent amount down and we're going to just have to wait for this to melt and it does take slightly longer than the last time I was showing this because we're using thicker chipboard pieces I'm just going to move anything out of the way that I shouldn't be getting too hot by using this near it so I was saying in my other video you want to have um, items with you that there's some left over on here you can see how if you use a silicone spatula it just pops off uh, which is really nice if you use it on your um, metal palette knife it will sort of stay on there but you can heat this up with your heat tool and then wipe it off with some kitchen roll as well um, I also sometimes use a spoon the little Nouveau spoon is brilliant for controlling where you put your powder as well but as this is heating up I'm just going to use a little embossing tool to hold it down so that it's coming into contact with the hot surface and then as I see bits and pieces melting I can spread this around um, to spread that powder all over the actual grey board piece and you can actually pick it up off the mat as well if you've got some left on there from previous goes so we just got to wait for this to heat up nicely you can see a little bit of uh, smoke coming off there because it's heating up some of the stuff that was already left on there from before um, and I said in my previous video uh, I will be like turning this on and off as we go because it does get too hot um, at some point it will actually start to be too hot and you don't need the heat to be staying at that kind of level but I'm just gonna keep holding this down you can see it's all melting really nicely on the antlers and you're getting that speckled effect um, with the silver and the black in there I basically just want a nice coat over the whole thing because having that embossing powder on there as a first coat um, 
gives a nice place for the other powders to, this will be molten already, so the other powders will disperse really nicely and quickly because they're going onto a layer of hot powder, which is nice. So, And the reason why I'm using um, a little bit of clear and a lot of that... Um, vintage powder is just because I've got a lot of the vintage one um, I actually have most of the vintage gold colour so if I do this in the future I might use uh, vintage gold as a base because I do have a couple of pots of that colour but we're just basically covering the whole of the stag right the way up to the tips of his antlers as well now that's all melted we can turn this off so it's not getting too hot and then I just went in with all the different colours so I started with some blue depths and I'm just going to tap that on and as you do this you'll be able to see like um, extra mica appearing from these as well because they've actually got mica powder in them too and it's reacting differently wherever it hits on the embossing powder I don't know if you can see that you've kind of got like little cells forming in some of the areas and then you can either um, tip directly from your pot like this or if you don't feel as controlled as that and you just want little sprinkles just push your finger into it and sprinkle over the top and then you'll get gorgeous like little speckled patterns and stuff on there as well then we want a tiny little bit of this um, Tropic Aqua colour just to add in a tiny little bit of lightness on here and this has got like a white base to it, so it really is um, an opaque kind of colour. So you don't want to add too much because it will overpower everything. I'll zoom you out a little bit more. We're going to go in with the silver sparkle embossing powder and sprinkle it on the antlers. Because I think it looks really nice just concentrated on the antlers. So again, we're just sprinkling because we've already got that first little base, so we don't need much of our regular powders then. And on the original, I put a little bit down there, and I also put a little bit on the head as well. And then, whilst it's still molten, if I haven't been talking for too long, um, I might have to hold that down so it heats up a little bit more. I might have to turn it back on, so... Excuse me whilst this last little bit down here heats up a little bit, but I want to do a little bit of marbling um, by just moving the embossing tool through the colour of the powders, it kind of like marbles it together. So we'll just wait for this bit to melt. The reason why this bit got colder is because the um, it, it, it kind of curves a little bit, the chipboard piece kind of curves up a little bit, so then this bit isn't in contact with the heated surface. So we're just going to wait for that to melt. A little bit longer. Okay, now that's hot again, we can turn it off. And then I'm just going to go in with the tool and just squiggle it around. Pull different colours into different areas and just play around with the colours that are already in there just to break them up a little bit and make it look a little bit different. You can do it as much or as little as you like. So I think that looks pretty good as it is. So I'm going to just pick this off of here, just using this to push from one side and then scooping it up with the palette knife and then putting it onto my glass mat to cool off. And I'll just move all of this out of the way and then I'll come back. Okay, so you can see how that's flattened out a bit now it's dried off. And we're going to come back in with those two polishes, the Mediterranean Blue Gilding Polish and then the Midnight Sparkle uh, Glitter Kiss. And um, the reason why I haven't cut this down to size before I embossed it, I don't know if you've ever done it, but if you cut your panel to size and then emboss it in an embossing folder, it ends up being not the same shape that it was when you first cut it because it's being um, like manipulated up and down into all of the crevices to create the pattern on there it kind of changes size or sometimes you get a wonky edge to it depending on how the pressure uh, applied to it through the machine so I always recommend now um, to do your embossing on a piece that's the size of the embossing folder do all of your inking and stuff onto it and then cut it down because then it's going to be the perfect size that you want it to be you could definitely die cut it as well if you want to especially if you're adding mediums to it to pick out the detail because then if you die cut it it doesn't matter if it gets a bit squashed because you'll pick, you've already picked out the detail um, but I'm just going to trim it with a paper trimmer after I've done the mousses onto here or the gilding polishes onto here so we're going to use the sponge and we're just going to take a little bit of the 
polish and get it onto the sponge. We want to go really lightly to begin with. We can always add a little bit more, but it's difficult to kind of remove what you've already done without like starting again from the beginning. So we're just going to go up and down in the direction of the wood grain to add a little bit of colour and to kind of like pick out the pattern a little bit. You can see you don't really need much product. You can make it go quite a long way and actually pull out the pattern. I love this knot on it. Um, it's really beautiful. It's a really gorgeous folder, this one, having like the three planks of wood. You could even um, cut them individually, like cut them into individual planks and mount a sentiment on them or something as well. It'd look beautiful. And you can add as much or as little of the polishes that you want to, you know, however much detail you want to bring out and everything. I'm going to go a little bit more, I think, just adding tiny little amounts so we're not getting any um, globs or anything or hiding any of that beautiful detail from adding too much on a, in one go. And as your sponge gets emptier, you can sort of press harder to get into some of the finer areas as well. Okay, so that is just the gilding polish on there, and you can polish this up if you want to as well. The name kind of gives you a clue that you can do that, and you can also do it with your Nouveau mousses as well. Just get a bit of kitchen roll, a dry bit, not a damp bit, um, and just buff it, and you get a really beautiful shine on the embossing or the... Uh, the sort of polish on the embossing and then just to add a little bit of sparkle um, I've gone in with the rainbow glitter kiss what's it called I've forgotten the name midnight sparkle glitter kiss um, sometimes you can just go with what's in the lid as well so I'm just pouncing the applicator tool onto what's in the lid and then we're just going to go really gently just to catch a little few areas with that beautiful sparkle I just love this sparkly one. The fact that it's got all of those different colours in it as well, it's just absolutely gorgeous. It's like the rainbow black um, glitter bit, that is stunning as well. I used that on a, um, a Halloween card this year and it was absolutely gorgeous. Okay, so I think that looks pretty good. So you've just got hints of that beautiful rainbow kind of glitter in there. Then, it shouldn't take long for Glitter Kiss to dry, especially when you're using it in such a small amount. So we can just sort of like waft this to dry it a little bit, just because we want to cut it down. Um, but we've got our finished deer here as well, which is cooled down. You can see all of that beautiful pattern that's on there because we swirled the embossing tool through it and then if I show you the original you can see the details that I had gotten on the original as well and how you never get the same results like a couple of times but you can get similar results by placing your powders in similar positions so really gorgeous effects that you can get with these okay so I reckon that is probably dried enough now so if I move these bits out of the way and get my guillotine I know for certain I want to keep that knot on the card because I really like it and I've kind of positioned it here on this card but this card the deer is going to be on the other side so I might want to make sure my panel is up this way and make sure that I get most of the pattern down this bottom area maybe so that when I put the merry over the top I'm not going to cover up that beautiful knot that's in the wood so I'm going to cut along that bottom edge to make it straight and then I'm going to cut along the side by butting it up to the top because now I've straightened off that edge. And then I want it to be about that long, I think. And I want it to be three and three quarter inches wide. And then that should fit nice. Oh, I've already got a card blank there. It should fit nicely onto my card blank then. You might need to trim the card blank a tiny bit. Yeah, maybe trim a little sliver off the card blank. Okay, so that is how that is going to go onto my card blank. And you can see how now this is the perfect size. But if we had started with a piece of card that was this size, it would have been, like, had wibbly edges or gone off wonky at one angle as well. Um, if you then put it into an embossing folder, especially a 3D embossing folder, because they really do uh, make the cardstock go up and down. 
so now we've got this I'm going to stick this onto the background first because there's nothing on the card that's going to hang over any edges so I can stick it down straight away using tissue tape and you want to make sure you stick this down really well because we have used a thinner card with the um, texture craft perfect and it's been embossed and we've put mediums on it as well so if we're doing all of that onto a, a lighter weight piece of card we want to make sure it's nice and firmly stuck down and I'll do the diagonal across the middle and then remove the excess or the backing sorry and fold that bit over and then I want this knot to be on this side this time so we're just going to add this to our card blank there we go so we've got our gorgeous background already on there then with the deer um, He's going to need to be underneath an acrylic block for a little bit to help him stick down properly. But we can get the rough placement of where we want our word to go first. Um, so that, you know, when we put an acrylic block on this, it can also be holding like the last letter of the word onto him as well. So we're going to go um, M, E, and then, I don't know, I never know whether to put them on top of each other or behind each other, if you know what I mean. So I think maybe if we start with the, see that one, the Y pops off the side of the card. So if we do this one, we're making the M pop off the side of the card. And then we go merry like that. And then the Y ends up on the D. I I think that looks good. So let's stick the Y into position on the actual D. And then we can go through and stick down the rest of the word. So we can put the R. I love these letters so much. They're just such like a quirky sort of font. And they just look brilliant. Whatever word you seem to write with them, it just works perfectly. They never, it never looks funny. Even though there's a mixture of like lowercase and capital letters. It always looks brilliant, however, like whatever word you spell with them. So that is the Merry. We might want that to be a little bit further up. And then we can use a little bit of 3D foam tape to add on the word Christmas. Which I've done with my Dymo labeler, or Dymo labeler, and then I've stuck it onto some white cardstock to make it much easier for me to put onto 3D foam to raise up. And then I'm going to use a bit of glue as well. And we can put that underneath the word Merry to finish our sentiment. And then we want to stick our deer on as well. So I'm just going to use my Cosmic Shimmer glue. You can see because of the unevenness of that piece as it's kind of got heated, it's curled up a tiny bit at the bottom and the top. Um, there's a lot of embossing powder on the back of the antlers as well, but that really doesn't matter. The other one stuck down completely fine and that had a load of embossing on the back of the antlers as well so it's not a big deal which is good I want to use a decent amount it's going to take a little while to dry but I'd rather it definitely stays on and grips into all of the detail on the embossed background so we can place that down there press it into position and then put some heavy acrylic blocks on there. I find this um, DL one from Woodware is fantastic because it's really heavy um, and then I usually put another one on top just to hold things down really nice and tightly to the card. So that should be holding down really well and then once it's finished we can embellish it with our sequins and gems and pearls and all sorts of different embellishments just to add like a scattering across the card but I'm going to wait for that one to dry so I have done this scattering on some of the other cards so I might just leave it at this for the end of the video so you can see sort of like the rough placement I like to go in um I suppose some people describe it as a triangle I sort of find it sort of flows like 
Imagine it's kind of like snaking around the card. It doesn't have to specifically be one spot, two spot, three spot like a triangle. It can kind of like just curve around the card to just draw your eye around the whole design. And I feel like it, it draws your eye past the beautiful deer and then to read the sentiment as well. So that's how I've done it on this one. But on this card, I probably would go that way and do the exact same kind of clusters, but doing the opposite direction because we put the deer on the other side of the card because we did it facing the other way. So that is the tutorial for this video. So I really hope you enjoyed it. If you wanted more details on what the pancake cooker is that I was using and you know all that kind of stuff, I did explain it a little bit more in detail where I got the idea from and stuff in my previous video. So at the end of this video I will link back to that one um, in the advent series showing you how to create this card which you should have already seen. This is the third one that I finished off where I didn't put the embossing powder on the winter greetings and I used some clear kind of gems and silver holographic sequins to finish that one off rather than doing the black gems. So yeah, if you want to see a little bit more, go and check out that video. But I really hope you enjoyed this video. Um, hopefully you've really been enjoying all of my crafty advent videos. I know this one's going to be a little bit into the series because I want to put that other one up first. Um, so hopefully you've been enjoying it. Hopefully there's a few more to come that you're going to enjoy as well. Um, I'm, I'm sort of aiming towards doing a lot of them to be these tutorial videos and then there'll probably be a few sped up videos sprinkled in throughout there as well. So I really hope you're enjoying the style of video and do leave me a comment if you are enjoying it. Um, and uh, I wish you a Merry Christmas as well. So thank you so much for watching. See you in the next video. Bye!